Are you doing the edit today? Hey? Look, you gotta look over here. No, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not interested. Today we are going to be doing a live edit. I want to show you guys the full process of actually editing a b-roll sequence to give you guys an idea of what the steps are that it takes to make your footage go from just like a bunch of random clips to something that looks really nice and professionally put together. Today's video is sponsored by Storyblocks and I'm going to be talking to you about them a little bit later on in the video. We shot some really fun footage recently at the beach. It was all shot on iPhone 13 and it was a scene of Hannah walking down to the beach and like sitting on the rocks. It was really nice. If you guys want to check out the video of how we actually managed to capture all of that footage, it's going to be linked up here. But for this one, I just had the idea of taking you guys for the full process, no steps skipped, almost like a job shadow if you guys were to actually be here editing this with me and I was showing you and teaching you how I would actually edit a B-roll sequence like this. So I'm gonna pop these headphones on. I have dropped my footage down into the timeline here already. We have all of our clips and I've also chosen the song that I would like to use for this video. There's two different ways that you can actually cut your footage and do your selects. I do it in the way where I throw all my footage on the timeline and it's not necessarily the right way, but it's the way that I've learned. The other way is to actually go through all of your footage in your project panel here and you can select the part of it and then drop down only your final select into your timeline. I like to go through my footage here and the process that I will do to do my select is just to lift them up into the next timeline here. So if I see one that I like, that one, I'll just put it up one bar and then I know which one I might be keeping for later. And this isn't final, these aren't necessarily the clips I'm gonna use, but they are the ones that I like and have a high chance of using. So I'm just gonna go through this quickly and put all the clips that I want up into that next little bar and then we'll move them along. That's my footage cut. You can see that I've put all the clips that I wanted up into the top. It took about five minutes maybe in real time. Now I can just grab all of these and put them down here and start working with them. This is a good way for me because it means that if I do realize that I don't have some of the clips that I might need, I can go back here and look at the other clips and see what I might want to use. I can also just label these quickly and make sure that I know the ones that I'm actually using don't like green, uh, this color, they were my original selection. So all the purple ones I know, I selected those. The orange ones are like second tier, maybe not that good. The next step that I wanna do is to cut my music so that I can start placing my clips onto the track that I'm actually gonna be using for this. Now, I've already selected a track that I feel is appropriate for this and it's important to find a track that fits with your footage that you're gonna be using. I'm gonna just listen to some of it and find a good part to cut because I'm obviously not gonna use that entire track, it's way too long. You can hear the track that we're gonna be using, really cool. And something I like to do is just expand this track like this so that I can see the waveform, I can see what's happening, I can see that like right over here it actually breaks and the music starts on that. And I can even just drop a marker on there quickly by hitting M. And now I know that's where it like breaks, that's where I'm gonna start something new, like a new movement or something. So that's quite a cool start right there. I'll just cut it and delete that. And I'm keeping my footage in mind because I'm gonna have this like walking through the forest stuff first. And then maybe that drop needs to happen as we get to the beach, as we like run down to the water. So I can play this stuff first. Now I can start actually placing my footage onto this music, keeping the little beats in mind, the different little pockets and start like playing it along. All of this footage that I filmed is in 60p. So I can slow it down to up to 50% and get some really nice slow motion happening in there. So let's just listen to this track. And a lot of this is just listening to the music and figuring out what clips are really gonna work the best where. I think I'm gonna start with one of these lens flares and then I might start with one of these cutaway beach shots that don't have Hannah in it, just to give the viewer the feeling that we are actually by the beach. Then we can introduce Hannah into it. So let's start with those and our next one, this wide of Hannah, and we can cut from the wide to the close. And that clip might be the first clip that we actually put on where the music breaks there. So. 
You can see this is just kind of moving your footage around and now I can start playing with it. I'm gonna just slow this down to 50%, have a nice slow intro. And then I'm gonna cut in a different place from the last beat, the last one I cut over here. But it's quite nice to keep your pockets a little bit different. You don't always wanna cut in the exact same place every time your cuts become predictable and boring. Let's do a little speed ramp. So we can show clip keyframes, time remapping and speed. We can put a speed ramp just on the end here, adding a keyframe by holding down control. And then we can stretch it out, lift this up to make it faster. Too far away, make it a little faster. Okay, that'll work. And then we'll do the same thing for our next clip, but starting from the beginning and fading in like this. Let's make this a lot faster. And then we'll slow the second bit down to around 50%. This is where it's actually really useful that I kept these clips here because the previous one that I wanted to put there is not actually in a high enough frame rate to use. It was just filmed in 24. So I'm gonna take this one, which was filmed in a high enough frame rate so that I can slow it down to 50% so that we can do our little speed ramp that we wanted to do here. I'm gonna get rid of this one. I might use it later on, but for now we're gonna use this one. And we're gonna apply our speed ramp. Yeah, that's gonna look nice and it's gonna slow down as that wave breaks. So that's super nice. And then the next thing that you can do if you want to for your speed ramps is that you can just change the curve of how you want them to be by adjusting this. This isn't essential, but you do some of us get a much smoother kind of transition between the fast and slow motion in that particular clip. So it's nice just to play around with it a little bit. That looks cool. I'm gonna cut there. Then next up, we can go back to our footage of actually having Hannah come down onto the beach and then we can get this side running one. You'll see with this, I don't really like, at least for my first pass, I'm not gonna go back to the beginning and watch the whole time. I often find people do that way too often and you waste a lot of time watching the video through. Rather do a rough pass and place everything how you want it and then you can watch it full from the beginning later once you've done that and you can make any adjustments that you want. So this one we're gonna go in from that clip to this clip. Let's cut where Hannah takes off of her hat because in this shot, she's doing bag stuff and then we can cut into that. And something that I like to do is like use the actions in the scene, cut them on the actions. It keeps each one of those clips a little bit more interesting. So for this one, we can show taking the hat off and then cut right there before she's really like finished taking that hat off. And then we can go straight into some of this like fun beach stuff playing around there and we can definitely cut from a wide to a close in that one to give it a bit of a sequence. Let's find something nice. And actually I'm gonna go from the close to the wide because our previous shot was this, which is quite wide. It's almost similar to that framing. And I don't wanna cut between those two. They don't cut together that nicely. But if I cut from the wide one right here to the close up, those shots are really nice and different and they're gonna cut together a lot better. We can slow it right down there as that music comes in little by little, we can do a nice speed ramp there just to match the music. As important as it is to cut on the beats of the music, it's also really nice if you can do other little edits and cuts on different features of the music, not only like the end of bars or new drops or anything like that. You can make each one of your clips almost like dance with that music, not only just cut them up. So let's see how this will work nicely together. Okay, I actually want it to be sooner so that we get that speed ramp onto this bit where it's splashing. So we can put that there. And then she starts doing a little like spin right there. So we can get rid of the rest of that and we can go to our wide. And hopefully she does a spin somewhere in the wide. Oh, she does it right at the beginning. So we can match cut those, getting that like that. And then those are gonna cut between each other. And then to transition between these, this one's in super slow. We're gonna speed ramp out of this as well just to match those speeds with our next clip being faster. So let's go back to 100. We'll keep it a little bit less. And then 
just match them up. It ends with her being almost backwards. Almost backwards. And then we'll cut again there. As it slides to the right like this, this is also sliding to the right. We can get Hannah coming up onto those rocks. Once we've lined up those two parts of the audio track to be nice and smooth, we can just place our last clip, which I've slowed down to 50% and put on a nice fade to black. And you can see that it's gonna play out really nicely. Moving back slowly and dipping down. All perfectly with the music. Pretty stoked with that. Okay. Now we start to get to some of the fun parts because the cutting is like the bulk of your editing and now we get to add like some little flares onto it and start creating some fun things that we like. Today's video is sponsored by Storyblocks. They are an online stock media website with over a million different assets. If you guys are creators and you wanting to make any type of videos like this, having something like Storyblocks in your pocket is gonna be a huge benefit. You can get things like sound effects and overlays to add like light leaks and sun rays. You can also get any type of stock footage that you can possibly imagine pretty much because if you guys do ever forget to get one of those important cutaways like you can see we almost did, you can download something very similar on Storyblocks and use that in your footage to make it a more rounded and professional looking piece. You can't always film everything that you need and even if for example in this we wanted to add a nice drone shot into this just to give a perspective, we could find one of those on Storyblocks. If you sign up for a monthly membership, you get unlimited downloads on Storyblocks. So it's an amazing platform for content creators like you and I. And if you guys wanna find out more about it, it's gonna be linked in the top of my description. It really is awesome. Let's get back to editing and keep creating our little edit we have here. The next thing that you guys wanna do is start adding in your sound effects. So the first thing I'll do is just mute our track that we've put there so we can get a good idea of what sounds would really be happening here. For something like this, it's gonna be quite simple sounds because it's generally just the beach. We can jump over onto Storyblocks, the sponsor of today's video, and we can just start looking for sound effects that we want, and it's gonna give us like pretty much anything that we're gonna possibly need. I can even type in beach, and we're gonna get things like beach ambience, that's just like waves in the background, some ocean sounds, some birds, and this is all gonna be perfect for our video because we want these sounds in the background just to give our video that more like well-rounded feeling like you were actually there. And we're gonna keep our sound effects very subtle. Um, they almost need to be like not noticeable, but you do notice the difference subconsciously. And then I will pretty much just drop these sound effects into our timeline. And these bird ones are only gonna be for the beginning. This is a single wave, so we're gonna keep it here, and then this is gonna be like our ocean background. And something else I like to do is just label my sound effects as well. When you have a much bigger timeline going on, it can start to get very confusing with how many different things you have. So keeping different color tabs for different types of media is something that can really help you guys. So we're just gonna quickly add in these sound effects and something really important for your sound effects is you don't wanna cut them where the clip is, you wanna give them a bit of an overlay like this and then fade them out. It makes it much less jarring, otherwise you end up having like hard cuts where it goes between. So even here where our bird sound effects start happening, I'm gonna start that clip a while before the actual video clip happens and then it's gonna transition nicely between the two. And that's pretty much gonna be it. If we turn back on our music, it's not gonna be as noticeable, but they are gonna be there. It's gonna make it feel like a much more full piece. The last thing that we actually have to do is just add a nice color grade. And the way that I like to add my color grade is by adding an adjustment layer, just so that I can do one color grade over all of my footage. If I have different types of footage, I can cut up this adjustment layer and fine tune the different parts of the color grade for like, maybe if it was something in a dark forest and then we cut to like a sunset somewhere else, I can change that up. For this one, it's gonna pretty much all be the same. So we can pop over to color, making sure that our adjustment layer is selected and we can do some basic correction. This was shot on a phone. So I'm gonna take the contrast down a bit. I'm also gonna warm it up a little bit. Take the highlights down a little bit. Maybe the shadows up, maybe the blacks down. Ever so slightly, maybe the saturation down a little bit as well. And then I'm gonna add one of 
my lots. If you guys want to get these lots, you can actually get them. They are at a discount at the moment. So if you guys want to use the same lots that I use across all of my videos, you can find those in the description. And the one I like the most is the Cine Skin. And you can see as soon as I apply that, it makes a huge difference to our footage. We can turn the LUTs down. They're all meant to be used at like between 10 and 30 on the intensity scale here. And we can just look through and make sure nothing's too hectic. This one looks too warm in my opinion. So I'm actually just gonna do a little edit on that one and take some of the warmth out. And I think that's gonna look a lot better. And that is gonna be pretty much it for the color grade. You could go way more in depth in the color grade, but I feel like with the phone footage, it's already very saturated and you don't wanna do anything too crazy to it to make it look kind of like over edited. If anything, we've toned it down a little bit to like take away a bit of the contrast and saturation. So let's take a look at our final video and see how it actually turned out. I haven't watched the whole thing through yet either. So you guys will be watching it with the same time that I'm watching the entire thing from the beginning. So let's take a look. Okay, cool. So that is the entire process of editing a B-roll sequence and you can see step by step the whole thing. This took me about 30 minutes in real time. I did it quite quickly for the purpose of this video and if I was doing it uh, not recording, I would take a little bit more time with the details and the timing and maybe shift a couple clips around. But hopefully that gives you guys an idea of how to actually do that full editing process. Remember to check out Storyblocks down in the description. They're an amazing platform for creators like you and I. Other than that, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.